Hey, it's Joel. I'm in Ventura, California, spring break capital of the world, and I'm here at Nexa 3D with Lewis. Joel, great to see you. Good to see you, man. Nexa 3D is building the machines here in Ventura. Uh, you're right here on our manufacturing line, so this is an early stage build that we'll look at, and we'll take you on a tour all the way through to a finished product. This is amazing, and what I'm really excited about is you and I both get to see the insides of these machines for the very first time. Okay, so first machine, it's in a state of openness. Yes. And what's kind of significant here? Yeah, so right here, very, very basic construction of the build. So you've got your frame, um, a few panels and things like that. What we'll focus on right here is the build chamber. So you can see this is where our material deposit is. Right here is where the actual building will happen. And this is our the beginnings of what will be the recoder uh, for the platform as well. So this is your material. It's going to heat it up and it'll slowly push up a layer right around four thousandths of an inch at a time that recoder is going to come over and spread that layer across the full build plate. And then what will be here is a wonderful CO2 laser that fires down into the bed to selectively center that part or melt um, each layer together. And the machine looks like it has some motion parts installed. How do we get parts out from here? Is that yeah. easily seen? So right here it would not be quite so easily seen uh, as is, but if you just move the recoder back here, this plate would come up. Um, right now it's secured during the manufacturing process. So as we look further down the stage, you'll get to see exactly where build comes up uh, in the printer. Let's go take a look at the next machine. Okay. And, and open it up. Right open. And now she looks similar, but a little different, right? So here's that recoder again. This is your, still your material bay. And now you can see exactly where that build uh, is manufactured. So this tray will sink all the way down here. We have about a 10 by 10 by 10 build volume for this platform. Okay, what's down here? This is actually going to be where you deposit what is called overflow powder. So there's a powder here that comes up, right? That's your material you're sharding with. This is the it, new material that we're gonna use to print with on this side. To print with. It comes across here. There's always a little bit extra and that's what's gonna come through right here. That oh, from the recoder process. Here. Exactly. Oh, okay. So we get to reclaim that powder as well. Would this be emptied after each print or can this sit in the machine for a couple of prints and then you recover? Yeah, you know, it's completely up to you. I find that, you know, whether you reuse that after every print, reclaim after every print, or you let it load up, really depends on your recipe. That's another fun part about SLS is everyone kind of has their own mix of brand new virgin powder, uh, the oh. recycled cake powder, as well as the overflow. Uh, that's a bit of the secret sauce whenever it comes to manufacturing with SLS. I didn't realize that, but uh, SLS is like baking a cake. It is 100% like baking That's a cake. That's amazing. You all start with very similar ingredients. Everybody's got the oven. Some are better than others. Um, <laughs> but your recipe at the end of the day is what helps affect those parts as well. What are the other notable things that we can see on this machine in this state that's different from the previous machine? It looks similar in what's available. So uh, one thing that is seemingly innocuous is this door seal right here. Uh, so that's going to obviously help hold in the heat, uh, not make sure, make sure no air escapes, but we print in an inert environment. So there's actually nitrogen throughout here uh, to prevent oxidation. So that's going to help seal that entire surface from the door side. Is there a nitrogen canister on board? So uh, we do have an onboard nitrogen generator, or you can hook it up as well. So oh, really? we have both options. Oh, okay. Because in a factory, they might have multiple machines. Exactly. And... So if you've, if you've got a floor full of SLS machines, you've most likely got some nitrogen that you are uh, tanking elsewhere and you just want to pump it in. Otherwise, you've got an onboard nitrogen generator uh, that can solve the same problem for each individual machine. When you are done with a print, yeah. and let's say it just finished, yeah. and you open this door, is there warmth? Oh, you're gonna feel a little bit of warmth for yeah? sure. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, and with any SLS print, you wanna give it the opportunity to cool down a bit. Uh, as you're manufacturing with plastics, you're melting at these really high temperatures. This will start to naturally cool as it gets further and further away from the part bed. If you open the door, let in fresh air too quickly, you do risk uh, some warp or shrink uh, for SLS parts in general oh, if okay, you open okay. it too quick. So you let it do a little bit of a cool down, you're gonna raise that cake um, and then uh, you can cool down the rest of the way in the, uh, you know, outside of the printer, um, or you can let it cool down completely in the printer before taking it out. Oh, like if this the, finishes at night, then they can just they can absolutely. Light. This is the part I'm kind of really excited about because I'm familiar with power systems and consumer grade machines, yeah. and we've seen some power systems on the industrial side of things. Mm -hmm. And so, just taking a peek under the covers and finding out the complexity of the electrical systems that are used to run these machines, I think, is is fascinating. And so, my first question is. What are the power requirements? So this is going to be 220 volt. 
Um, so nothing you know, too terribly extreme here, but it is powering some very complex electronics, as you well, can see. Well, let's go through it. What are the electronics it's got to power? So yeah. you've got so heaters. Heaters, you've got the laser itself, you've got the galvos um, that direct that laser, um, you know, sensors throughout the printer to manage your oxygen yeah. levels, your temperature, and those types of things. So uh, it, it gets pretty complex pretty yeah, quickly. Run the display, the computer systems mm -hmm. that actually Absolutely, your systems, your optics, and... your IR lamps, um, kind of the full gamut. Lewis, we're now in a fully assembled, almost tested, ready to go to customer machine. She's actually already been tested and we have a surprise print inside for you. Really? Can I yeah. open it? Yeah, give it an okay. open. <laughs> okay, I, there's something right here. You've probably seen a little peek of it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to these first because, because these are incredible. Metal parts, Metal obviously. parts, yes. This is a- That's a titanium uh, impeller. A and titanium and impeller. Titanium bracket there as well. Titanium bracket. These look great. And that is stainless steel, 316L. 316L stainless, okay. And this is all printed on this machine. Yeah, so the great thing about this printer, you can do both plastics, which SLS is very known for, as well as a process called cold metal fusion. And that's something we've been working on for a good while. Um, and it gives this printer a whole new life in terms of versatility. Well, yeah, I think um, we've seen that before, right? We have, you've seen it once before, uh, and uh, I think you've got an episode on it. It was really cool because the metal powders don't plume because they're coated in a polymer. Correct, so during this process, Brilliant. the cold metal part comes from whenever we are centering the metal part together and it has a thin polymer coating, we're actually centering that part together lower than what we typically center our uh, plastics at. And so, <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. I'll let you hold that because there's something in here that I have to take out. And look at this! Holy cats, it's a safety troll. It is, it is. We thought you might like that. Lewis, this looks good. Yes, so with the QLS 260, uh, we definitely don't skimp on the ability to do fine feature detail and high resolution prints. Something like this then, people are gonna wanna see. Where's, where can someone go to see this model? Well, you know, we're glad you got to see it here first, but we'll also be showcasing it at Rapid this year. This one? Yes. This one right here, you can go get a selfie with it at the Rapid TCT show in Los Angeles. We'll let you look at it, might even let you hold it if you ask really nicely. Now, if you wanna to go to Rapid TCT to see this, you can. You can see this, you can see me, you can high five Lewis. All right, and I'm gonna need that back. We have one more print to show you. Okay. Oh, special delivery. Printed on this, right? Printed on this printer, that is our <laughs> TPC. So it's a uh, new type of TPU, highly robust, super bouncy, nearly indestructible. All right, well then I guess you get to see this as well at Rapid TCT. And if you wanna go, I'm gonna get you in for free. There's a link and a code in the description. Use that, get signed up, go for free, and get notified of other really cool stuff. If you made this far, you're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more, fight for a cause you believe in, and print all the bouncy things. Yeah, <laughs> and as always, high five. See it rapid. Oh ho ho! There, oh. there it is. There it is.